The Real Housewives of New Jersey The title of this week's episode, Fopology, is clearly meant to reference Siggy's wishy-washy, Mia culpa to Margaret. But I think it could also reference Margaret's apology, which the group widely held to be, the best and bravest apology in the history of apologies but to which I say may. We'll get to that, in a bit. We're still in the land, and it was just last night in Housewives time that Siggy accused Margaret, of being anti-Semitic. Today, Margaret, Dolores and Teresa are going grocery shopping with a delightful chef named Alberto Barone, then, tiring to his house to cook dinner for everyone, Melissa, meanwhile, meets Danielle and Siggy to bike around the land. That, means Siggy is defying Michael Campanella angling for more screen time staying in Italy in the hopes of salvaging the, trip and mending fences with Margaret. After an entire season of basically just going to restaurants and yelling at one another, it's nice to see the gals engaging in actual activities. Plus, Teresa gets to work out her Yule frustration, on a beef tartare. Terrific. After a solid five minutes of biking, Melissa, Danielle and Siggy stop in a park to have a picnic. There's champagne, strawberries and lots and lots of salt, from Siggy's tears. The one thing, she cannot tolerate, she says, is meanness, and Margaret has been insensitive and harsh to her. I cannot with this, anymore. I'm not sure why this feud seems so tiresome to me. Many of the Housewives franchises focus on one, or more riffs over the course of a season, hashing and rehashing every wrong that's been committed, and I am, almost always there for it. But there's something exhausting about Siggy's persistence. If she were a fictional character, she's what, I would describe as one note. Honestly, I'd rather see her get butt pellets again than have to hear one more time about how horrible Margaret is. Stop trying to be friends. There. Problem solved. Next. Oh god, I take it, all back, because what Siggy says next actually makes sense, from the time I was a young girl, the Holocaust was part of who I am. I gave, Margaret, an opportunity to say, maybe I use that in poor taste, she says to Melissa and Danielle. Siggy's parents are survivors, and even if they weren't, we can all agree, again, that Margaret should have never brought up Hitler in a gunfight about a bush fashion show. So I understand, that. And I also understand why Siggy feels like she's not quite getting what she needs from her friends, which, is for one of them to stop worrying so much about Siggy and Margaret meeting halfway and instead stand up and say, Margaret, that was a stupid thing to say. Apologize to Siggy. The problem of course is that Siggy's, now the Jersey girl who cried wolf, she spent so much time carrying on about cake and manners and sex such a, remember him? That now that she has an honest grievance about something that hurt her deeply, nobody's really listening. It's, dinner time, and Margaret and Siggy can barely look at each other, presumably because of their feud but possibly because Margaret, is wearing a blindingly ugly yellow slip that I wouldn't want to look at either. Margaret has decided she's not, going to say a word during dinner, and Siggy just wants to get through the meal without any confrontation, which, sure, let's see how that goes. Melissa, the biggest proponent of the two women meeting halfway, is concerned about, Margaret's silence, and beckons pigtails outside to make sure she's okay. This, to me, is sweet but a mistake. Let, sleeping dogs lie, Melissa. Then again, I'm coming at this as a person very concerned about them missing the prosciutto and melon course and not at all concerned about Margaret feeling better. My biggest worry when they were ejected from the restaurant last week was oh my god did they even get to eat anything? When they rejoin the dinner, Siggy is trying to explain to the group why Hitler is such a trigger word for her, that this needs explaining to anyone makes me worry, and Teresa says that she gets it because for the longest time she didn't want to hear the word jail. Remember, Teresa only ever speaks of going away or Joe being away, as if he is on the world's longest business trip. So this is a big moment for her. Whether it rises to the level of Hitler, I guess it's not for me to judge what a word means to another person, so I won't. And, bless her, at least she's trying to relate. Teresa saying her trigger word is jail makes total sense to me. Margaret says in her confessional, it was so horrific what she had to go through. Pay attention to this next part, 
Siggy saying Hitler is her trigger word, even though I can't understand it, building mine, she says that, word hurts her, so I'm never going to use it in her presence again. Where do I begin? First, great. Never use it in Siggy's presence again. Good idea. Second, let's clear something up. Hitler is a name, not a word. It is the name of a person who annihilated 11 million people, including 6 million Jews. Two of the Jews he was trying to annihilate? Siggy's parents. But you don't understand why Siggy reacts to that word, Margaret? You don't understand? I am swiftly moving over from the side of thinking Siggy is a bit bonkers and out of line and starting to understand where she's coming from. Mostly, I am really angry that a show I watch purely for the hilarious accents and terrible clothes and nonsense fighting has made me use all caps and talk about the Holocaust. Here's the problem with Margaret's even though I can't understand it. She lobbed the mention of Hitler at Siggy as an example of someone very bad, as a parallel to Cam D. Hitler wouldn't have killed me, does that make him a good person? Is what she said. That is, she used an example that she knew would resonate, to make a point. Now suddenly she doesn't understand why Siggy is so upset? Nope. Margaret used that example precisely, because she understands it. And so does Siggy. Margaret apologizes to her by saying that she didn't realize Hitler was a trigger word for Siggy and would have never used it if she'd known. But here's the thing, trigger word was merely an easy way for Siggy to explain her pain, and Margaret's apology completely misses the point. Siggy is silent in the face of Margaret's Mia couple because it isn't really one. Siggy could never possibly be friends with someone who doesn't understand that tossing off Hitler as if he were just some random example of a bad dude and not one of the absolute worst dudes in the history of the world, with particularly personal resonance for the daughter of survivors, is simply not okay. And that right there is why they can never be friends. I finally get it. And if I have to choose a side right now, then I choose Siggy's. The rest of the women do not. Danielle Staub thanks Margaret for being brave, oh my god shut up, Danielle, and Teresa says the apology brought big and tears to her eyes. I really wish Siggy had taken Michael Campanella's advice and gotten the hell out of there. But the next day she acknowledges to Danielle that she thought Margaret said a nice thing to her, which makes Siggy a bigger person than I am. And which sets Danielle off on a tangent about Margaret's courage and how it would have been nice for Siggy to also apologize. Cue the biggest eye roll you've ever seen from Dolores. God I love this woman, Raycap continues on page 2, next.